Welcome to Miku's Hardware. I was about to record test results of E5 2667V4 against i3-12100 tested with the 7900XT graphics card, but I have received these three AliExpress packages all together. And since I don't know which package contains what, I decided to record this short unboxing video and the 7900XT results will have to wait for a couple of days. Let's start with this first package, and this one is in some sort of a bubble wrap, so this might be a motherboard, but I'm not sure which motherboard. I think I know what it is. It's supposed to be the mini ITX motherboard from Team US. Or maybe not. Let's see. No, I was wrong. I was wrong. It's not the Team US motherboard. It's something else. And the last few things. Okay, so here we go. You can see this is tiniest box ever, very small one. It's uh, the air in or air in. I don't know how they want it to be pronounced, but it's those laptop and mutants mounted on top of the motherboard. And here I have a little additional package, so I'm gonna cut that one open as well. So over here I have got two extra heat sinks which are supposed to be mounted onto the motherboard as enhanced heat sinks, but unfortunately these heat sinks are not compatible with the 12th gen mutants that I have in here. And the seller has warned me about this problem multiple times and really didn't want to sell me these, so I don't complain later on on AliExpress that they don't pass my motherboard. But I said that I just want to order them for the sake of um, having a video review and show that they do not fit the 12th gen mutants. So, with that being said, let me put this aside and we can take a look at the motherboard. So, inside the motherboard or motherboard box we have a cable, SATA cable and a tube of some sort of thermal paste. Then we have uh, this uh, kind of box for M.2 Wi-Fi adapters. I hate these boxes because they are so small and it's next to impossible to attach these Wi-Fi exits. And uh, here is an M.2 screw for the M.2 adapter. I'm not sure why it's there, because there is one already included. But anyway, we have it, so that I will later on install on the motherboard. Now we of course have a Yoshi shield, and now we have got a manual from Erin. And they say it's M80X or Micro ADX motherboard. And we have actually we have here a manual in English. This is rather surprising. I thought that it will be a typical Chinese useless thing, but we actually have a real manual which looks pretty decent. I will uh, show a closer picture of this one a bit later. So the motherboard itself and here we have two installation tip cards. So this is uh, one and this one installation tip card another one. When you receive the parcel please firstly buy a CR2032 battery in your local store and install on your motherboard. Then can start use your motherboard. Well in reality the motherboard will work without and the extra battery, it just will not save the BIOS settings if you power it off. So, the motherboard itself, let me see, yes, they have this uh, warranty protection sticker, which I obviously gonna break through. And here comes the motherboard itself. So immediately what I can say is that I see this M.2 SSD stand is just flying around and not attached to anything, which is bad. Uh, I will just screw it in so it doesn't damage anything and I don't get it lost. So, quick overview of the motherboard and what do we have here? I hope it will be visible on the camera, but we have here soldered 
laptop CPU and this one is a 12th gen i5 or i3. I don't exactly remember what I purchased. We have two memory slots for DDR4 memory modules. We have PCI Express X16 slot, we have PCI Express X4 slot, we have two M.2 slots, we have here one more M.2 for Wi-Fi PCI Express adapters, or maybe this is only CNVI, I'm not sure. Then we have very pathetic looking VRM and with very small heat sinks. But I think for the mobile i3 or i5, it will be plentiful. Then we also have obviously the power connectors here and here. Then we have only two SATA ports and all the front I.O. Here we have CPU fan header and here we have one extra chassis fan header. And that's it. The motherboard is pretty simple, pretty lightweight and pretty tiny. I hope it will fit in Cooler Master and R200 chassis. For the rear I.O. we don't have much. We only have four USB 2 ports, two, two here, two here. Then we have Ethernet port, uh, two USB 3 ports, and then display port HDMI, HDMI, and audio exit. So, of course, I will test this motherboard and the review will be available on the channel. But for now, it's just quick specs overview. Now it's time to get this second package and I think I know what is in here but before I make any assumptions let me open it because some packages arrived, some packages not arrived yet and I might be wrong. So now going into the product box itself and here I think yes so that's what I thought it is TNUE RX Vega 56 graphics card so it comes in such a box basically it does not say if it is Vega 56 or Vega 64 but according to the GPUs that screenshot that I have seen it is Vega 56 unfortunately uh, and the only extra thing we can see is 8 gigs of uh, video memory, but that's uh, the same for 56 and 64. So let's open the box and inside the box we have this very well protected graphics card. So one plastic thingy and then we have graphics card inside an anti-static anti bag another in another plastic wrap, this kind of plastic wrap. So, apart of that, we don't have anything more, just the box and the graphics card. So, let's go straight to the graphics card. And how do I open it? Okay. Uh, so, in this case, the warranty sticker is already broken. So, this might not be the new card or it might be returned by someone. Or maybe they just broke it um, to test before shipping to me. So here is the Tinue RX Vega 56 graphics card and you can see by the location of the power connectors over here that the PCB itself is only this long. The rest is the radiator and the backplate. Now let me try to see if the backplate actually has any thermal pads between the backplate and the PCB. But as far as I can say, I do not see any thermal pads over there. So I'm not quite sure if it is helping with cooling or no, but at least it looks nice. And here it says AMD Radeon Viaga 3, okay, AMD Radeon Viaga 3 fans 8 GB and that's it. We also have a warranty sticker here. We have this slot protection plastic piece uh, and this shroud is plastic it's not aluminum or at least I think so yes it is plastic so it looks pretty nice but I can tell you that I have got some information from China that these are refurbished mining cards and in certain cases Tinyue didn't even bother to resolder the Vega chip itself to a new PCB they just used 
uh, old PCBs and soldered um, uh, or sorry installed the GPU cooler on top of an old PCB with an old GPU after washing it and making sure that it works but of course in some cases sometimes those old mining cars will break very quickly I'm not sure how long this one will work and if it works at all, but for now I have it unboxed, it looks pretty nice and I plan to make a white build with the Juan Andre P660M Plus motherboard that is also white. Okay, and this last box is then supposed to be the mini ITX motherboard from Team Yue and this one is supposed to have chipset B760. This one is light blue or turquoise color B760i Snow Dream. Let me see, what do they claim here? So they have DDR4 support, NVMe M.2 uh, 4.0 and DR MOSFETs, I guess they're talking about the VRM 8 plus 1 plus 1, so it's supposed to be 8 plus 1 plus 1 phases. So of course, I will test all of that. On the back side, nothing extra, they just say Wi-Fi 6 here, but obviously Wi-Fi 6 adapter is not included with the motherboard, you have to buy it separately, which is a shame, but we will see. So, inside the box we start with a SATA cable, and again, this super annoying tiny box or a tiny holder for M.2 Wi-Fi adapters, just like with the other motherboard. I hate them because uh, those rigid cores inside constantly disconnect from the adapter. Then we have such a warranty card, which I believe is totally useless outside of China. It's in Chinese, the support information also in Chinese, but at least we have something. And finally, here comes the motherboard. I'll put all this stuff inside so I have some free space on my table. The motherboard also comes with this uh, sticker and this one is also already broken so apparently they took it out for testing before shipping to me and here I can see that the antistatic bag has got some damage which means that shipping was very rough for this motherboard. Here comes the motherboard itself. I have to say that it looks uh, rather premium or at least premium for Chinese motherboards and here we for the first time have aluminum built-in uh, I.O. shield uh, with the Chinese X99 motherboard such as X99TF or X99F8 they have built-in I.O. shield but that one is plastic so it does not help to protect these contacts uh, from uh, any source of static electricity which may happen but this one is aluminum, so it shall help. Quick specs overview, we have a much better VRM compared to that Airin motherboard. And of course, here we have LJ1700 socket. And since it is a 760 chipset, then it's supposed to support 13th gen and 12th gen CPUs natively. Then here we have two fan headers. One is for uh, system fans, one is for the CPU fans. And furthermore, here we also have two ARGB headers, this is very surprising. I'm not sure what kind of software we can use there, but the headers are there. Then we have uh, front audio exits here, here, then we have four, four SATA ports over here, and furthermore, for the first time on a Chinese motherboard, I see USB Type-C header on the motherboard over here. Now, the power connectors are here and here, which is pretty standard. And then we have this massive heatsink for an M.2 SSD drive with this tiny kind of uh, blower type fan connected through a tiny this little cable and it actually has three contacts so I have a hope that this cable will actually control the speed of this fan and this fan is not going to scream like a total crazy nonsense. What I also remember about this motherboard is that on the back side over here we have an additional M.2 drive. I don't know if both of them are PCI Express 4.0, maybe one is PCI Express 3.0, one is PCI Express 
uh, 4.0, but at least here we have an additional M.2 slot. Then for the I.O. or for the rear side I.O. here we have exits for the M.2 Wi-Fi antenna and there is in the slot it is pretty hard to see because it's covered by this VRM radiator. Then we have four USB 2 over here, only two USB 3 which is a shame and for some reason we have two Ethernet ports. One is 2.5 gigabits and one is just one gigabit. I don't know why would we want to have two Ethernet ports on a gaming motherboard instead of having a couple more USB ports. This is just beyond my understanding, but it is what it is. Then we also have a display port, a display port and HDMI. What is extremely annoying is this. So this is supposed to be battery, the CMOS battery, but since Chinese Post uh, do not accept anything with batteries, even with the tiny motherboard batteries, Chinese sellers are just blindly cutting off this battery and that's it. So you need to figure out yourself how to connect battery for this motherboard. You will have to either tape these wires to the battery or buy a special adapter. And inside there I can see that it was the battery was glued on to the uh, some of the IO exits, but it was just turned away and cut off. And that's probably why they had to open the box. Now let me just quickly open the socket so I can be sure that uh, the CPU socket is not damaged. Of course that's not going to be visible on the camera but at least I can look at it. And as far as I can say there are no damages at all. What I can also say about this motherboard is that unlike Huanan G motherboards, this one comes with holes only for LJ1700 CPU coolers. So if you want to install LJ1200 or LJ1150-155 socket cooler, then it's not gonna pass here, but will work with Huanangi motherboards. Other than that, this motherboard is a very well-packed mini ITX motherboard with two M.2s, with PCI Express X16, with a Wi-Fi slot, with the USB Type-C header, uh, with RGB headers, two fan headers, and my only complaint is that if we have only two USB 3.0 ports and the rear side are your. Instead of having two LAN ports, we should have just got two extra USB ports. And of course, this battery connector is also very annoying. So this is what I have got in these three boxes, the mini ITX motherboard from TeamUA using B760 chipset, the micro ATX motherboard from Arene using mobile Core i5 or Core i3 12th gen, and this one TeamUA Vega 56 graphics card. Yes, unfortunately this one is an X mining card, but I hope it's gonna work and I'm going to use it in my white build with 100 B660M plus motherboard. With this I have to say thanks for watching, if you're interested to see detailed reviews of any of these items then stay tuned and I will publish these reviews on my channel with all the detailed specification and information. Bye for now!